So the absolute value of x, as x goes to 0, that is going to be the vertex, so that is a point of interest. So how do we deal with this with a limit, and how do we show what the limit is? Well, since the graph is changing from one side to the other, it is really a piecewise function. So first of all, we have to establish f of x as a piecewise function. Okay, and as x for x is greater than or equal to 0, we know that it's equal to x. And for x is less than or equal to 0, or less than, we'll just say less than 0, it's equal to the opposite, or negative x. So then once we've done that, to do the limit, we need to be able to do the left to to have the same from the left side and right side. So we'll do the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of f of x. Okay, so it's going to go to, it's going to be this graph here, which is 0, and the limit as x goes to 0 from the negative side. We'll use this side of the graph. It's going to be equal to 0. Now, we, pro we don't really need to do this full analysis because we do know what the limit of that function is as it goes to zero because we do already know what it looks like so but what happens when we're not quite sure okay we do still need now we need to do, apply this analysis now we need to because we're not exactly sure many of us aren't familiar with this graph here so it's the absolute value of x divided by x so what's happening at zero so we have to look at the piecewise function what's happening to f of x when it's on one side of zero and what's happening to f of x when it's on the other side of zero okay so on this side of zero we're going to end up with positive and positive so we end up with it equals one okay it's just y equals one okay if x is three three divided by three is one if x is four four divided by four is one what about x is less than 0. Well, <clears throat> it's going to be negative x divided by x, or for example, negative 2 is going to be positive 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 3 becomes positive 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. So from the left-hand side, it's equal to 1. So when we establish the limit then, the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side, well, we can use this part of the graph here, that the limit is equal to positive 1. <clears throat> when it comes from the negative side, just change that, it's going to be equal to positive 1. And when it comes from the negative side, the graph's going to be equal to negative 1. So it's going to look like this. Okay, so we can't, oops, we should make it equal to 0 because we're dividing by 0, so there's a hole at 0, okay, and it's going to be at negative 1. And from the other side, again, there's going to be a hole at 0 because we can't divide by 0, and it's going to be equal to positive 1. Okay, so the graph is going to look like this, and we have, we can establish that there is no limit at e x equals 0. Okay, the limit does not exist because it is discontinuous at that point. So when we have this, we have to consider the piecewise function. We also have to consider dividing by zero. So again, when I, I made a mistake at the beginning here is that I had it equal to zero, but it cannot be equal to zero on that part. So is f of x a continuous function? No, it's not a continuous function. Okay, because it is discontinuous at zero. Okay, so then let's look at C here. So we have to consider <coughs> what's happening. There are some issues here. What's happening at infinity? Okay, what's also happening locally at three? And it's going to make a difference because <clears throat> we're, three, we're dividing by 0 at 3, so we need to get to 3 from the positive and negative side. So I'm just going to establish the piecewise function first. Okay, so for the domain x is less than 3, 
the graph is going to be equal to negative x over x minus 3. Okay, so I'm just going to flip it to its opposite. And for x is greater than 3, okay, that's going to just be a positive. So we'll just keep it as x over x minus 3. Okay, so this would represent the negative version. And this represents the positive version. Okay, so when I do the limit as x approaches 3, from the positive side, okay, we're going to end up dividing by positive 0. Okay, so we end up essentially with 3 divided by 0 from the positive side. So that becomes positive infinity. Okay. So I'm just going to do this in a different color here, just so we, when we graph this, we can see what's happening. So it's going to be, numerator is going to be 3, and we're going to be approaching 0 from the positive side. And because it's positive, we're going to end up looking like that. When we approach 3 from the negative side, okay, we're going to end up with negative 3 on top and then divided by negative 0. Now, I could have kept the negative on the bottom. We could have just said 3 divided by positive 0. But in either case, this is equal to positive infinity as well. This was equal to positive infinity here. So we have an asymptote at x equals 3, which we would expect, but the asymptote is not going to go one side up and the other side down because of the absolute value nature of it. They're both going to go up. Okay, so let's take a look at as x goes to infinity from the positive infinity. We're going to end up with infinity divided by essentially infinity. So x divided by x, we're going to end up essentially equaling 1. Okay, that minus 3 becomes insignificant, and we end up with positive 1. From the negative side, however, because we're going to end up with negative infinity over positive infinity, okay, we end up with, in this case, and not that negative infinity over infinity is equal to 1, but in this case, because they're both linear functions and they, the linear terms essentially cancel out, we end up with negative 1. Okay. So what is this graph going to look like? Okay, well, we have a horizontal asymptote at negative 1. We've got our horizontal asymptote at positive 1, okay, as x goes to infinity. At x equals 3, we have this vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Okay, I'm just scaling this here. And as x approaches 3 from the positive side, okay, it's going up to infinity, and then from the pause going out to pause infinity is equal to positive one. Okay, so when we look at as x goes to infinity or z, positive three from the negative side, it's also going up to pause infinity, but now it's going down to negative one as a horizontal asymptote. And at x equals zero, uh, I don't think we did this, but as x e approaches zero, uh, looks like we're going to end up with zero. Okay, as x approaches zero, or as, at x equals zero, y equals zero, so I put a point through zero. And that's not a point maybe that, uh, that we've been using, but if we have coordinates to work with, we really should incorporate them as best we can. So there, this, there is some things that we have to be concerned about a little bit. And this is not something we worry about yet. Okay? But there is this possibility that the graph can drop underneath and approach the negative one from the other side. Or same with the, the positive one. Okay? So this is something that I'm going to, it's like a, a bit of a preview in that we will look at some of those. But for now, we're not going to worry about them if we see an infinite. Uh, horizontal asymptote like that we'll just assume, we're going to assume that it doesn't cross that asymptote but that's not a true statement you can cross horizontal asymptotes you cannot cross vertical asymptotes but you can cross horizontal asymptotes and again i encourage you to check your graphs when you graph them okay try to understand why those pieces are the way they are and when you see pieces that are unexplainable that you're not sure about you have to you want to make note of them and 
as we go along, we'll, we'll explain more details of a graph. Uh, we will not ever get to every single detail of every graph, but as we move along, we're going to develop understanding of how to get more details of graphs. And that is a big part of calculus, is learning these, how these graphs behave and how we get graphs to look the way they do.